All right, welcome again to the Simple Bible Study Podcast uh, with your host, the Bible Guy, continuing to go through God's Word, uh, one chapter, one verse, one book at a time. And so we're picking up today at the, the sixth chapter of Romans and the seventh verse. And as you grab your Bibles, we'll pray. Lord, we're so appreciative that you have given us the chance to to read and study your word. We pray, God, that you would open it up and help us to understand what you would want us to see. And then bless each one who happens to come across this study whenever and wherever they do. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as we discussed last time, the sixth chapter of Romans is about the sanctification process. The, the That's a big word, but it just means the setting apart God setting us apart and cleaning us up and making us holy. We are, we are to be a holy people. That's what sanctification means. Uh, when the, when the, the, they built the, the, the tabernacle in the Old Testament, they referred to the utensils in the, in, in the tabernacle that were used for the service of God, the spoons, the bowls. They referred to those things as holy and what that meant was those things, those bowls, those whatever they were in the tabernacle, were only to be used in the service of God's work. That's it. You didn't take the bowl home and go pour you some cereal. No, it stayed right there in the tabernacle. It was only for the work of God uh, and, though, and, and because those things were holy. Well, now that's what you and I are. You and I are set apart only for the things of God. That's what this chapter is about. It is about being sanctified. It is about ignoring the old tastes and the old wants of the body and going towards the new thing, which is living a life of holiness unto God. So let's let's read on here. Verse seven says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, Paul is using the analogy that we died in Christ. And so when we, when we came to Christ, we took not only, we not only did we take on Jesus, not only did we come in Christ, but we died with him, figuratively speaking, of course. He says, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, Christ died and it it, it, it is is imperative to us to remember that we died in him. And now we didn't literally die, but we must reckon (laughs) That's an old word. That's an old uh, Southern word. We must reckon ourselves to be dead unto sin. Somebody said Paul must have been a a cowboy using that word reckon. Uh, He must have been from the South or something. But (laughs) to reckon means to suppose or to consider a thing as such. And so he says you need to consider yourself dead to sin. You got to act like uh, (laughs) you've got to, you've got to, uh, 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 you live like you are dead to sin. Now you may still have those tastes, but you've got to be able to say, you know how they say name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. Well, this is an instance where you name it and claim it, where you tell your flesh, I'm not doing <laughs> what you, what you want to do. I'm going to turn that thing off. I'm going to, uh, 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 I'm going to look away from that thing that I, that I know I want to look at. I, I'm not going to go with that person that I'm tempted to go, uh, go with. I'm not going to drink that thing or smoke that or whatever it is that your taste may be. I am going to reckon, consider myself dead. <laughs> I, I, I have died to sin, he says. He says, he says, reckon yourself dead indeed to sin. Dead to sin, but alive to Jesus. And I'm turning from that old, uh, whatever it might be, that old habit, that old drug thing, that old boyfriend, uh, that old person that don't mean you. I'm turning from them. And, uh, and, and when you turn, when you, when you, when you do a, a whole 180 turn, now what you were facing is behind you. And what was behind you, you're now facing. You're turning from that thing and you're turning to Christ. (laughs) 
You're not just turning away from sin. You're not just turning away from dope and alcohol or, or whatever sinful thing, whatever your taste might be. I know what mine is. I'm not just turning from that thing, but I'm turning to something better. I'm turning to Jesus. He says, reckon yourselves dead to sin, but alive to Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that something? He doesn't just leave you out there and say, don't, 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 don't. Don't do, don't do, don't do. No, he says, don't do, but do Christ. <laughs> don't do that, but do the things of God. You turn from one way, but you go towards another way. That's what repenting is. Repenting is turning from one direction and going in the opposite direction. Turning around, dead to sin, but now alive uh, to Jesus. He says uh, that that that's what's important. That that's how we that's how we live the sanctified life. We live it dead to sin, dead to those things we know are wrong, and alive to Jesus Christ. And so, uh, when, when that old tempter Satan shows up, and he, he's going to show up, you you say that you're saved. You say that you're sanctified. You say that you're holy. You say you want to live for Jesus. You say you want to turn away from what you know is wrong. Well, well, you are laying out the welcome mat for Satan. <laughs> He's going to show up with exactly uh, uh, that that you have a taste for. And he knows how tall you like him. He knows how how <laughs> he knows how to mix the drink just like you used to drink it. He knows how to uh, he knows what club you, you like. To, he knows all of that. And he's showing up with temptation. But your job is to be ready for him and to tell him, I'm not going after the things of the devil and the world and the flesh. I'm going after the things of God. And you got to mean it. Hey, you got to make the decision uh, 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 before he even gets there. Somebody said that uh, <laughs> this may be too graphic. My mama listens. So sorry, mama. But <laughs> they said that the, the time to make the decision for the young man is not when he's in the back of the the back seat of the car with the girl. Okay, <laughs> that that ain't the time to, to decide to be holy, uh, because at that point he's already he's already put himself in the temptation. No, the time to make the decision is before you even got in the car with, <laughs> before you even went out with him, before you even made the decision to ask him out. That that's when you make your decision that you are gonna do what God says do no matter what. And so we turn from the things of Satan and we turn to the things of God. And so he says in verse 12, let, it, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Now to reign is to rule. Uh, that's another uh, law or rule of the sanctified life. Don't let sin rule or be in charge of your life. Whatever sin you're struggling with or dealing with, Paul says, don't let it rule over you. Why? Well, because you already got somebody ruling over you. <laughs> and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Lord literally means. It means he is in charge. He is literally over you. He is in charge of you. And so sin can't rule over you and can't rule over me because I already got a ruler. And my ruler is Jesus. And so verse 13 says, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself to God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. This is another rule for living for God. Don't yield to sin. And to yield is to give in or to submit to. Don't give in. Don't give in to what you know is wrong. He says, when the temptation comes to do wrong, don't give in to the sin. Instead, give in to God. Are you seeing the theme here? <laughs> Are you seeing the, 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 the theme that, that Paul is laying out? He's putting sin and God on opposite ends. And you can go after one or the other. He says, don't give in or don't let sin rule over you, but instead, let God rule over you. Don't yield to sin or give in to sin, but instead yield to God or give in to God. <laughs> Paul is really breaking it down to us here. Verse 14 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. He, he says sin doesn't get to rule you. 
That which is wrong does not get to tell you what to do. <laughs> Your flesh and the devil don't get to rule and tell you what to do. He says, because you're not under law, but under grace. Now, this is a, a little bit of a, a difficult thing to, to kind of explain, at least for me. I know there's some good teachers out there who can probably explain it better than me. Uh, but I'll, I'll, you know, I have to admit, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just being honest. This whole sixth chapter, the way Paul lays it out, uh, is is a tough one for me. So I hope I haven't lost anybody yet. <laughs> and and you feel free to email the Bible guy if you have any follow up questions, and I'll see if I can explain it to you in a better way. But let me use as an example. Uh, let, let's let's do an example to show what Paul is talking about here. At least what I believe he's talking about. Uh, back when I first started driving a car, I learned that we have a law where I live about wearing seat belts, and I didn't, yeah, I didn't like wearing seat belts. It, it wasn't cool, you know. <laughs> when I watched, <laughs> when I watched the the music videos and the, you know, the, the 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 gangsters in the videos, they were driving cars and they were laid back with one arm on the steering wheel. They didn't have no seat belt on, you see, <laughs> and so <laughs> I wanted to be cool. I wanted the girls to notice me and all that. I'm driving now. I'm not on the bus no more, you know. So <laughs> I didn't like the seatbelt at all. Uh, I, I just I, and and I didn't wear the seatbelt. <laughs> if I'm if I'm being honest, um, mo- at least most of the time I, I I didn't wear it because I just didn't like it. Now when I wasn't wearing it though, I would always be looking in my rear view mirror. I'd be looking behind me to see if a policeman was behind me or if a policeman was passing me on the other side of the street. I was always looking for him. And I'd be nervous when I saw that police car. Uh, and, 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 and when I did see the police car, I'd, I'd, I'd try and slide that thing over my shoulder real smooth like, you know. <laughs> I'd, I'd slide it over my shoulder and then when he got out of sight, then I'd just take it off, you know. And, uh, you know, by the way, I got caught one time <laughs> by a cop who, who slid up. He slid behind me real smooth, you see. <laughs> and he probably wouldn't even bother me, but I, you know, I, I tried to be slick and slide the thing on and he saw me and he pulled me over and gave me a ticket. Uh, you know, and so I, I was always uh, uh, looking uh, for the police. I was always worried about getting a ticket. I was always in fear. And so sometimes I'd put the thing on just because I didn't want to get a ticket. I was afraid. I was, I, I was guilty and all of that. Well, you know what's happened over the years? <laughs> I have seen enough accidents. I have seen enough uh, 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 accidents on the road out of nowhere. I've seen people fly, fly out of cars uh, after being hit and all of those type of tragic and awful things to where now I just put the thing on automatically <laughs> when I get in the car. I don't even think about it. I put it on uh, because uh, I know uh, I know that it's good for me. I'm not thinking about no cops. I'm not <laughs> I'm not thinking about nobody giving me a ticket. I put it on because it's a good thing for me to do. And it and I know it is. Well, now that's what Paul is saying here. He's saying when I wasn't uh, uh, when I was under the law, I did what was right. But because I was afraid, <laughs> because because I, I was I was afraid of, of, of getting in trouble. I felt guilty. I was, you know, all of that. That's what being under the law is. And that's a bondage. That's like me driving down the street looking for the police. That's a bondage. <laughs> I can't drive in peace and all that. It's a bondage. I'm worried about being pulled over. That's what being under the law is. But the difference is when you're under grace, when you're under grace, like I, I ended up being, <laughs> You do what's right, not because you're afraid of going to hell, not because you're afraid of getting uh, caught. You do it because you know it's right. (laughs) And you know what God says do is always better for you, you see. And so when he says, we, uh, he says, what then shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Uh, uh, He says, for sin uh, sin shall not have dominion over you, verse 14. For you're not under law, but under grace. It simply means you are not under any bondage to do what's right. (laughs) You are under grace to do what's right. You're not doing it because you're afraid or because you 
uh, 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 you, you don't want God to get you. You're doing it because you know God's way is the best way. <laughs> that's that's why. And so the, the, there is a, a great difference between doing what's right because you feel like you better do it or you're going to be in trouble. That's what the law is. And doing what's right because you know it's the right thing to do and it's the better thing to do. That's what grace is. Amen. And so verse 16 says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether the sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. See, you're going to serve somebody. <laughs> you're going to serve something. You're either going to serve sin or you're going to serve righteousness. You're either going to serve the devil in the flesh or you're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I am imploring and begging you if you're listening to this. Make the decision to serve Jesus. You will never regret it. All right, we're going to cut off there and pick up again next time. Until then, hey, thank you so much for joining. We'll see you then.